cannot achieve much. I hope you are getting me. <clears throat> People that are not courageous are not able to, to actually actualize their potential. They have a lot of potential, but because they are not courageous, they are not able to do much as is required by their potential. We are in the campaign period, I think you know. And I have seen politicians, I think are more courageous than us. <laughs> because you see somebody like my friend here, John Maswili, coming out from the blue and saying, I am going to be a presidential candidate. You, you look around, how is this guy going to get votes? <laughs> are you getting me? Somebody just says, I'm going to be a presidential candidate. I say, wow, this is serious courage. But part of it is actually strategy. And another one is courage. We began with the strategy, you remember? For you to possess and occupy the land that has remained, you need a strategy and you need courage. Some of these guys who come out and say, I want to be a governor. They are just trying to test waters. And that is a strategy. And when they try again and reach somewhere, they say, now I have decided to step down to support so and so. <laughs> it's a strategy. So when so and so makes it, the, guy, the, the other guy is rewarded in some way, isn't it? So it's a strategy of success. It's a strategy of doing things. And then they have exposed themselves. So next time, they will not be newcomers. It is a strategy, and it's also courage. People must be courageous as we embark into this world, as we do things in this world. We must be courageous. Are you getting me now? This is where we are. When you want to buy a house, I can tell you it is courage that enables you to buy a house. Because houses in this city are so expensive. Are you aware? You touch a house and somebody is not ashamed to tell you it's going for 25 million. Where will you get 25 million and your salary is 5,000 or 20,000? How will you buy that house? Even if your salary is 100,000 and the house is costing 25 million, how will you buy that house? It will require a strategy and it will require courage. Praise the Lord. So courage is where I am. And it is very important for us believers to be courageous. To be courageous. Elder Mamba, when he was preaching, he repeated some things I've said in the past. I say, when the children of Israel were promised land to occupy, the land was already occupied. So it needed current for you to occupy what is already occupied by somebody else. It means you must go there and tell that person, wake up and move, I take over. That is not easy, I think you know that. As we talk now, Russia is fighting with Ukraine. How many of you know that? You know, some of you are so spiritual, you don't even listen to news. <laughs> it's, good, it's good to know what is going on. He's fighting with Ukraine. Hmm? And somebody must be courageous, like the Ukraine president who says, we are not going to surrender. That is courage, a very dangerous courage, because guys are launching cruise missiles to a small state, being hit so badly. Surrounded, the capital city is surrounded, and the man is saying, We are not even discussing because you want us to go to Belarus, where they are fighting from. We are not going to Belarus and negotiate with you. And these guys are fighting. Can you imagine Russia and Ukraine? <laughs> Somebody must be courageous. Somebody must be courageous to say, I'm willing to take the bullet, but I want to stand on my position. If you want to possess anything in this country, you need courage. You need to get the bull by his what? 
by his own. If, if you don't do that, you can't succeed. You can do some level of success, success, but not your maximum potential. You can get a good job, do good things, but you could have gotten even much more if you are more courageous. A courageous person is daring. You dare. You are able to get into the waters. And they say, Jesus, like Peter, if you are Jesus, allow me to walk in the water. And then he tells me, come, Peter. And Simon Peter gets into the water. Praise the Lord. It is not easy. It requires courage. Let me go back to my notes. Kidogo, saying, any person needs courage in order to succeed in life. I know you will tell me believers need the faith to succeed. Yes, they need the faith to succeed. But even that faith <laughs> needs courage. Because faith is dangerous. You know, the things we talk about, I'm doing it by faith. It is dangerous. You can put yourself in a situation which is complicated. Because faith requires courage to apply it. Faith is action. You don't just say, I'm doing it by faith, and you sit and look. It will not happen. You say, we are doing it by faith, and you take action and move. Praise the Lord. So faith is action, and that faith needs courage for it to be activated. Because you must march forward. You must march forward. I wonder after this sermon, people begin to exercise faith. And as you exercise faith, you remember you need courage. Because some things are difficult to move. Things are difficult to move. But they can be moved by faith, accompanied with the courage. You must be a courageous person. I like listening to politics a lot, but I don't like playing politics because it's very difficult. You look at politicians daring one another, and some of these guys who are daring others have no votes. But they are very courageous, daring. <laughs> yeah, very serious, very courageous. But they have no votes. They even know they have no people. But the way they are talking, my friend, I believe, I think, I wish believers can be like politicians. We can achieve a lot. Where you say, by faith, I am going to, you know, Caleb said, give me that mountain. Give me that mountain. I know it has big men. It has the sons of Anak. I know they are strong. But give me that mountain. Although I'm 85 years, but give me that mountain. You see, some things are barriers in our lives. Some of these things that we talk about, they, they are barriers. You know, something like tribe can be a barrier in your life. You say, I don't belong to that tribe. I it can be your barrier. Get out of the tribe cocoon. Get out of that and move forward. Don't just say it is Kikuyus who know how to do business. Iyo ni mbari ya umenjiwekea. Hakuna mtu alisema mkikuyu ndiyo peke. Yake anajua biashara. Sindio. Get out of the cocoon. Land into the business. Join the Kikuyus and learn how they do business. Then you'll be able to expand your business. Move and join the Kisis. Kisis are very aggressive. Get to know how they do their things and learn the ropes, and you'll be a great person, but you need courage. Am I speaking to somebody? Because there are people who are just docile. You look at somebody so docile. When will you move when you are so docile? This world is strong. <laughs> we used to do some biology long time ago. Was it biology or botany or whatever it was? Hmm? Something called survival for the fittest. Animals in the wild, in the wilderness, they survive. 
the fit survive, the weak die. I am sure you studied some, some things like those. In this world that we live, there is nothing for free. Nobody will just tell you, come and sit here. You have to demand your, your rights. You have to demand your right. And that requires courage to demand your right. But now, yes, was a few years And I just want to tell us that there are so many opportunities in this country. And that is the land that remains. You have occupied some land, but there is other land that you have not occupied. Those are the opportunities that we have before us. And those opportunities can only be occupied when we rise up with the courage and they say we want to get these positions. Praise the Lord. Some of you are called into different ministries. Uh, some of you are called into government. Others are called into politics. Others are called into preaching like me. Others are called into different things, technical things. You need to achieve to the maximum. Don't fear anything. Fear is from the devil. Don't fear anything. Once upon a time when I was in Ketui High School, I realized there were some guys who were very sharp. And I wanted to be sharp like them. So I remember one time I had to change my endometry to go and stay closer to one guy who was very sharp. <laughs> Are you understanding? Because I need to learn and I need to walk with him so that I can also come up. And, and you know, by associating myself with a guy who is sharp, I began to do much better than I was doing when I was alone and moving around and being docile. So it, it causes you to wake up and they look for people who are doing something like you wanted to do. Associate with them and they move out of your cocoon and they become, begin to move. That requires courage. I want us to look at the Bible today so that you don't say, Pastor was just talking about experience and the world. I want to take you to the Bible and we look at some people who needed courage to do certain things in the Bible so that we can encourage ourselves in the word of God and know that we can be courageous just like these men in the Bible and women who are courageous and they did certain things. I want us to look at Moses in the book of Exodus. Moses. Moses needed courage to speak to Pharaoh to let the Israelites live. Let me just stop there and, 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 and let you know a bit of history about Moses. I believe all of us know, before I read the scriptures, all of us know that Moses was born and because children were being killed, boys, he was put somewhere in the river and, as the, the, and then the Marie, M Miriam who was the sister was watching how that thing is floating on the river and they see who will take that baby that is how this baby landed in the hands of the daughter of Pharaoh that story you know and then he was raised up in the, in the state house of Pharaoh and he became, he learned everything about Israel. Oh, sorry, about Egypt. All the leadership skills, all the administrative skills. He became a very bright person in the house of Pharaoh. Then one time, he actually, maybe as he continued living there, he discovered his brethren, who are the Hebrews, are actually slaves. <laughs> But him, he was enjoying in Peros household and living a very good life. So he decided to go down and look at his friends down there. And when he went there, some things happened. He killed an Egyptian. You know that story. He killed an Egyptian because he was not happy the way the Egyptian was treating an Hebrew. 
Then the following day, he walked around and they found Hebrew men who are brothers, not brothers by blood, but brothers because they were Hebrews, fighting. Then he asked them, why do you want to, to fight and your brethren? One of them asked him, who, who made you a governor over us? Who made you an overseer over us? Do you want to kill me the way you killed an Egyptian? And you know Moses thought that nobody saw that he killed an Egyptian. So he, he disappeared. He decided to run away. And then when Pharaoh came to know that Moses killed an Egyptian, Pharaoh wanted to kill him. That is why he disappeared. He went to the wilderness and went to live where he was living. Now, with that history, let's read Exodus chapter 5, verse 1. The Bible says, And afterwards, Moses and Aaron went in and told Pharaoh, Thus says the Lord of God, the Lord God of Israel, Let my people go, that they may hold a feast unto me in the wilderness. Let my people go. Now, that itself needed courage because Pharaoh himself wanted to kill Moses. And Moses is coming back to tell him, let my people go. Let's read, let's read Exodus chapter 2, verse 11. I want you to relate those things. They are very important for you to know that this man really was courageous. And he needed to summon all his courage in his life to go back to see Pharaoh. Now, Exodus chapter 2 is the story I was trying to narrate here, verse 11 to 15. It says, King James Version, And it came to pass in those days, when Moses was grown, that he went out into, unto his brethren, and looked on their burdens, and he spied an Egyptian smiting an Hebrew, one of his brethren. And, we, and he looked this way and that way, and when he saw that there was no man, he slew the Egyptian and hid him in the sand, verse 13. And when he went out, I began from 11 to 15, in case I made a mistake. So verse 13, and when he went out the second day, behold, two men of the Hebrews strove together, and he said to him that indeed the wrong. Wherefore smitest thou, thou thy fellow? And he said, Who made you thee a prince and a judge of us? In this thou to kill, that's a hard English, thou to kill me, as thou killest the Egyptian? And Moses feared and said, Surely this thing is known. Verse 15 says, Now when Pharaoh had this thing, he sought to slay Moses, but Moses fled from the face of Pharaoh and dwelt in the land of Midian, and he sat down by a well. Moses disappears into the land of the Midianites, and that is where he got his wife, in the land of the Midianites. I think for 40 years he was that site, he hid him. Then God tells him to go to Pharaoh. Are, are you seeing? You, can you go to somebody who is looking for you to kill you? And it's not just a normal human being. It is a king. It is Pharaoh. There was no democracy those days. You know today there is democracy. There are human rights people who talk and they try to help people not be executed. That time... The, the Pharaoh was a human rights person. He was the ruler. He was the king. He was the president. He was the prince. He was everything. And he was the law. Now Moses goes back to him and tells him, let my people go. Now these people that I'm being told to let to be let to go were the, were the laborers. They were the ones holding the economy of Egypt. These people. They were the laborers. And now for you to tell him to release the laborers, where was he going to get the laborers from? His economy was going to collapse. And again, the person who is telling him, let my people go, 
is a guy who has killed an Egyptian and ran away to hide. And he is looking for him to kill him. Can you imagine the courage that Moses had to summon? If it was not God, I don't think he would have tried to go. But the Lord, God needs courageous men to send. He doesn't need weaklings to send. He needs courageous men. So you need courage like Moses to wake up and say, although I have enemies, I am going to, do, to go there. I am going to try. I am going to do it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to be encouraged church today by Moses, who became so courageous and was able to go back to a person who is looking for him to kill him. That needed courage. A man called Joshua needed courage because when he took over from Moses, not, yeah, from, from Moses. He, he, he was with Moses all along. He saw the challenges Moses went through with the children of Israel. He saw the rebellious hearts of the people of Israel. And then he also saw that when Moses broke the, 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 the what is it, what do I say? When Moses did not obey the law, when Moses decided to disobey or became annoyed and hit the stone for water to come, that is where he finished everything and God told him, you will not see the promised land. He saw how Moses failed to see the promised land because of the rebellious hearts of the people. Now God came to Joshua and tells him, Joshua, I want you to lead these people. If it was you, can you lead those guys? Those guys who are not like you are here, 300 people or 200 people. These people were thousands, millions. They were many. And some of them were knowledgeable. Some of them were hard nuts to crack. That is why they made him annoyed and he couldn't cope. And for that reason, Moses did not reach the promise. Then God comes and tells Joshua, now you are the one to take over. <clears throat> I can tell you, <clears throat> sorry, I can tell you this man needed courage. And that's the reason the Bible says God repeated courage three times to him for it to sink, to sink, and they know it is possible. The Bible says in Joshua chapter 1 verse 6, Joshua 1 verse 6, it says, Be strong and of good courage, for unto these people shalt thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swore unto their, their fathers to give them. God is trying to fulfill a pledge he made. Hallelujah. Our God is faithful. He fulfills pledges. <laughs> Today we are supposed to be faithful and fulfill our pledges, isn't it? Hallelujah, somebody. <laughs> That's not exciting. We are supposed to do what? To fulfill pledges. Our God is faithful. He had made a pledge that he will take the children of Israel and settle them. He had told Abraham, this is your land, many years ago. And he kept that. He kept that. Now, he say, now the time comes and he tells Joshua, Joshua, you are the one who, are, who is going to take these people across the river, Jordan, and uh, fight the battles that are there and settle my people. I can tell you, he had to tell Moses three times, be courageous. Be courageous, Moses. Be strong and of good courage. Be strong and of good courage. Be strong and good courage. Courage is the only thing for us, brethren. For us to succeed, courage is the only thing. 
Bwana Yesu asifiwe sana. Who am I seeing there? Is that Mudui? You are? Oh, praise the Lord. <laughs> Karibu sana. God bless you. Yeah, that is the county leader for Ketui. We are very blessed to have you in the house of God. So we need courage, brethren, for us to do anything. We need courage. And that is why most, Joshua is one of the most important person in the Bible because he was able to settle the children of Israel in the promised land. Very hard job. And he's the same Joshua now when he is very old. He's being told by God, there still remains a lot of land remaining for you to possess. This is our topic this year. The land that remains is the one we want to possess. There is another man I want to share with you today. He's called David. David really needed courage to fight in Goliath. You remember that battle? That battle was not a normal battle. It was a tough battle. This man needed courage to fight in Goliath. And you know, I, actually some things come from God. When we surrender before God, God gives us these things. He even gives you courage. Hallelujah, somebody. He gives you faith. And without courage, you can't exercise that faith. So, in this situation, David is a small boy. He is not even allowed to go and fight. His business in the fight was to take food to his brothers who are fighting. So when he goes there, he finds a very big man, I believe he's a Philistine, a very huge man, he must be from the sons of Anak, very tall man, who has made Israel look like children. He is abusing them and telling them anything, and they would all run into the tents. When he shouts across the other side where he's standing, he says, bring one of you to fight me. He calls them dogs, he calls them any name. They all run into the tents. Now, David, a small boy, who has never fought any battle, he goes there and looks at this man who is abusing the chosen generation, the children of Israel. He says, who is this uncircumcised man? Who is abusing the people of God? I want to fight him. <laughs> His brother told him, you small boy, go back home and take care of your sheep. <laughs> go home. Who brought you here? Why did you come here to see the battle? You are not supposed to be here. Go back. He says, but this man is abusing the children of God. God is able to deliver this man in the earth. You know, those are words of courage. Those are words of courage. Then the word reached King Saul, who was also hiding in the tent. He couldn't walk out. <laughs> then the, he said, bring the boy here. The boy went and said, I have a CV. You know, sir, it's very important to have CVs, by the way. When you are fighting any battle, when you are applying for jobs, don't go there with no CV. When you want to do something, don't go there with nothing. He also had some little CV. And do you know what a CV was? When I am taking care of the sheep, of my father's sheep, a, a, a bear came <laughs> and attacked the sheep. I got out of the bear. I tore it with my hands. I saw he's listening. This poor boy was doing this thing. <laughs> then he says, I have another CV king. When I was also taking care of the sheep, a lion came. I faced the lion with my bare hands and got out of the lion and killed it. I think the king said, let's try this boy. <laughs> Let, there's a CV. But beyond the CV, there is courage. Hallelujah. There is courage. How can you face a man who is everybody is cared about? Israel was not a small army. Israel was not a walkover. But there is a man there who is a Philistine who has scared them to the bone. They are all hiding in the tents. Nobody wants to come out. But courage comes in. Courage comes in David. And he says, I am willing to face him. 
The king says, let's try this boy. He removes his armor. He removes his, his suits and all those things that they wear. He put him. He put those things because you don't go to war without protection of your chest, your head, your everything. The boy could not walk. What courage is that? He couldn't walk. He tried to step the, 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 those clothing. Those, I don't know what are they called. Those things were heavier than him. He couldn't walk with them. He removed them and said, no, I was killing these bears and these things when I'm, I, have no, I have nothing. I can do it without those things. Now, the man you are facing is not even alone. He's walking with a, a, with a, with a, with a guy who is carrying his shield. A man would be ahead of him holding his shield. Field, I mean shield. And then him is coming with his spear and is properly dressed to fight. But this boy is going there with a sling and some stones. Goliath looked at him and laughed very loud. He laughed that scaring loud. loud. Do you, have you ever heard somebody sarcastically laughing? He laughed like, wow. Why are you sending this small boy? <laughs> Is this the only one you can find to fight me? I am going to kill him and I don't know throw his whatever to... Oh. But the boy was courageous. He needed more courage. He said, how can you abuse the children of God? I am coming to you, not with a spear or anything, but in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. In the name of God. In the name of the Lord. I think that is where he, managed, he, 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 he finished the battle. When he said, I am coming to you, not with a spear, not with a hammer, no, not with a, with a shield, with nothing, but in the name of the Lord. And I am going to kill you, cut your head, and throw it to the... <laughs> I, I mean, that needed a lot of courage, isn't it? So much courage. <laughs> and I can tell you, Courage delivers. I don't know whether you guys, you have seen boxers when they are going to, to fight. You are so safe, so you don't watch sports. When the boxers are going to fight, they are brought when they are being weighed. First of all, they are like this, trying to, trying to scare the other guy on the other side. <laughs> And if you know the muscles and you see things coming out here, me, I have not, I'm not, I don't have those things. But when he stands like this, you can be scared already. So the, 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 the technique and the strategy is to scare your enemy. By the time you fight, the enemy is scared. Hmm? Then when they meet, they are brought somewhere where they face each other like this. And you know they are like, you know, trying to annoy each other. To make sure that by the time we fight, you are already annoyed, I have already defeated you. This is what these guys were doing. Are you sending this small boy to me? Scaring the boy. And then Goliath, and then George, um, David is also shouting, are telling him, I'm coming to you in the name of the Lord. And today I'm going to kill you. That is current that this boy had. I want to read for you. I think it must be you there. <clears throat> First Samuel, chapter 17. I read from 42 to 46. I can't read everything. 42 to 46 says, And when the Philistines looked about and they saw David, he disdained him, for he was but a youth and ruddy. And a fair or and of a fair countenance. And the Philistine said unto David, Am I a dog that thou comest to me with his tapes? And the Philistine cast in David by his gods. And the Philistine said to David, Come to me, and I will give the flesh unto the fowls of the air, unto the beasts of the field. Verse 45. Then David then said David to the Philistine, Thou comest to me with a sword, and with a spear, and with a shield. But I come to thee 
in the name of the Lord of hosts and the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. This day will the Lord deliver thee into my hand, and I will smite thee and take thine head from thee, and I will give the carcasses of the host of these Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air, and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel. There is a God where? In Israel. King da I mean, David was actually using the Bible all through. He was talking about God all through. And his current was based on God all through. And that is why he beat this guy. But even when you know the scriptures, you need current, isn't it? I think you know so many scriptures. Do you use them? <laughs> you need courage to state those things and to face a man like Goliath. You need courage. There is a man in the Bible. There is a man in the Bible called Elijah who faced the prophets of Baal. You know, some of these things, we read them like stories, but they are very significant. The prophets of Baal were not just prophets. They were sponsored by the wife of the king. They belonged to the wife of the king, King Heab. The wife was an idol worshiper. And she had these gods, these prophets, who she sponsored. Eh? Jezebel, that is the lady, was the one who brought idol worship to the house of Israel. And the whole thing was a mess. And Elijah decides to confront these fellows. And you know you are confronting gods which belong to the king. I mean, if they belong to your wife, don't they belong to you also? They belong to the state house of Ahab. And Elijah has to have courage to say, I'm going to confront these guys. And he called them to a contest. And you know, you need the courage also to tell people that I want you to do this and you will see what my God is going to do. Don't you think you need courage? All of us are quiet. Do you have courage to call a crippled man and tell him, leave your seat and walk? Do you have that courage? You need courage. <laughs> I'm told by my wife one time, some young men were very courageous. They met a man who was walking with a stick. And because they, they were on fire for the Lord, they told him, God is going to heal you now. And you don't need the stick. They took the stick and threw it away. They prayed for the man to be healed. They prayed and prayed. And when they discovered the man is not able to walk and is not being healed. They ran away because now they have thrown his stick. <laughs> they have thrown his stick away. <laughs> they have thrown his stick away. It is God that heals people. So even when you tell people, come, the Lord is going to heal you, it is by faith. And it also requires courage. Because you can do certain things which are tough. Like now, Elijah here is calling these guys to a contest. And he's telling them, we want to see whether your Baal is the God. Then we shall believe that Baal. If the Lord that I believe in will do this, then we shall all believe in this God. That contest Muamba was not easy. You needed God. Because between that contest, if you fail in that contest, you will die. You will die. Are, you know, nobody has ever thought about that. 
you may never have thought that if Elijah, if the God of Elijah did not bring fire from heaven to burn the sacrifice, Elijah was going to be killed there. He was going to die. But he was so courageous, he said, let's see who is the God that we should worship. First Kings, First Kings chapter 18, verse 20. Let's look at 20 to 24 and verse 27. The Bible says, So Ahab sent unto all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. Ahab was the king. And Elijah came unto, unto all the people and said, How long how do ye between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. But if bow, then he follow him. And the people answered him, not a word. Verse 22. Then he said, Elijah, <clears throat> unto the people, I, even I only, remain a prophet of the Lord. But Baal's prophets are 450 men. 450 men. Let them therefore give us two bullocks. Let them choose one bullock for themselves and they cut it into pieces and lay it on the wood and put on fire under foot no, foot no fire under and I will dress the other bullock and lay it on the wood and put no fire under. And call ye on the name of your gods. And I will call on the name of the Lord. And if the God that answereth by fire, let him be God. And all the people answered and said, it is well spoken. Let's go. Now let's get, <laughs> let's begin the test. My goodness, you need courage to face 450 men, uh, prophets of Baal. Then verse 27 says, verse 27, And it came to pass at noon that Elijah mocked them and said, Cry aloud, for he is a God. Either he is talking or he is pursuing or be he is in a journey or parandiveja he sleepeth and he must be awoken. <laughs> he mocks them. Just shout. Maybe he is sleeping. You know, gods of bowels would sleep. But our God never sleeps. He neither slumbers nor sleeps. Hallelujah. So this is what they were doing. The, the, the current part is that the prophet of God is able to say, let's put one bull here for sacrifice. No fire under. There is firewood. Let's put another one here. Firewood without fire. Pray you and God. The one who brings fire is the one we are going to worship. That contest requires courage, I can tell you. So church, we all require courage. We require courage for success. And if this courage was not there, God was not going to act. It is courage. He never wanted to let his word come out and come back void, as the Bible says. And that's why, as preachers, you may be a sinner as a preacher, but when you preach the word of God, the word of God saves people because the word of God comes out and will never go back void. So, the man of God has said, let's proclaim you, our God, my God and your gods. Let us see who answers by fire. That is courage. Church, we need courage for us to see miracles. We need courage for us to possess the land that remains. We need courage to do all these things. I have so many examples. By the way, I can finish. Maybe in the next five minutes, I should be able to finish, then we pray. We are supposed to finish at 12.30. So I still have some few minutes. I can finish this so that Next time when we meet, I'll talk about something else. 
But the thing is, all these men were so courageous to face the situation. And I can tell you, after the prophets of Baal were defeated, and Elijah killed, ordered them to be killed, all of them, he was in more trouble because Jezebel started following him to be killed. That requires courage because there will be no peace. No peace. And you know there will be no peace. It requires courage. Another one that I want to share with you, it is actually Jesus Christ. This one I will not take very long with it. It took courage from Jesus himself, who was born in Bethlehem, by Joseph, a carpenter from Galilee, who was well known to begin to say, he is son of God. <laughs> Imagine, you wake up one day, you're the mamba, and you tell people, I am now the son of God. I mean, Jesus was born in Bethlehem, like any other baby, like any other child, and began to grow with the people. And then a time came when he says, I am a son of God. Who will believe that? Will people believe you, Kevin, if you, you went there in Ruai and they start saying uh, you are the son of God? <laughs> See, but this man, we know him. Eh? John, uko, 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 kwa mulima, uko. You begin walking there with sandals and a long robe with a beard. And you begin to say, I am a son of God. Who will believe you? It required courage. For Jesus to come out and say, I am a son of God. And the Bible says in John chapter 6, verse 42, that, and they said, is not this Jesus? That are that people talking now. Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How is it then that he said, I came down from heaven? How come? It required current. And by the way, that's at the end of the day. They killed him. They killed him. They killed him because of this. Nothing else. Saying he's God. He's coming from heaven. He's the son of God. Doing miracles and saying he's the son of God. Saying he has come to save the people. Saying he's the king of, of kings and lord of lords. That is why he was killed. It requires current. So, for you to summon your courage, I want you to know you can achieve a lot of things. But also it is dangerous. Some people are too aggressive, too abrasive, so aggressive that they, they brush people on the wrong side. That is when courage goes beyond the normal. But we all need courage to achieve our purposes in this world. But now yes, was a few years old. Finally, I want to talk about Peter. Peter <clears throat> had to be courageous to step forth on the day of Pentecost amid persecution to tell the people that they are not drunk and also to preach a sermon which rebuked the priests, elders, Pharisees, scribes, and Sadducees. By the way, do you remember the sermon that Jesus was preaching? The sermon Jesus, uh, no, not Jesus. The sermon Peter was preaching is not better than what Mwamba was preaching this morning. It's not better than what Joshua has been preaching all the time here. It was a sermon of history. <laughs> it was historical. And then he finalized by saying, that in Jesus, that you people crucified, <clears throat> you people crucified. That Jesus, he took, he took the whole crime back to the, to the Jews, back to the Pharisees, back to the Sadducees. He took it back to the elders. And you know, Jesus was killed because the priests did not want him. They are the ones who, who, who mobilized people to say crucify him. So Peter stands on that day of Pentecost, full of the Holy Ghost. I can tell you, the Holy Ghost brings courage. Hallelujah. I think we all need the Holy Ghost because with the Holy Ghost, with the Holy Spirit in our lives, we will rise up with the courage 
and we will say things without fear, and whether we die or we don't die. It is that current that we require as believers. Peter stood and they said things. Acts chapter 2. Let's look at verse 14 to 21. <clears throat> wow. There are a few more, but I won't continue with them. Let's look at that and say, but Peter standing up, but Peter standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is what which was spoken by the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass in the days, saith God, <clears throat> I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my, and on my servants and on my admins, I will pour out in those days of my, of, of my spirit and they shall prophesy. And I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. Then the sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into the blood, before the great and notable day of the Lord, of the Lord come. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That was a message Peter was preaching. And he rebuked them. And how many people got saved? <laughs> so many people got saved. Courage of the highest order. Jesus has just been killed. You can also be killed. And he stands even knowing that it is dangerous what he was talking about. So what I'm trying to, to share with you today is that we require courage to live. We require courage to do things. We require courage to do the will of the Lord. We require courage to, to occupy, to possess the land that remains. Finally, allow me to say finally, sorry for this, because I realize I don't want to repeat this. I will just do the, the last one now. It took poor courage to be beaten to death, and after waking up, to travel to the next city to preach the gospel again. This instant always challenges my life. It requires a very strong, courageous, and resilient person to do what Paul did in Lystra. He was torn to death at Lystra. After a while, he rose up, and the next day continued preaching in another city, after which he returned to Lystra, Iconia, and Antioch, what a courageous man. I think you know the story of Paul in Lystra. What happened in Lystra? Paul, <clears throat> I think this time they were with the, it was Paul and Barnabas. Paul healed a person, a lame person. And when he healed a lame person, the people of that city have, I had never seen somebody like that, healing a crippled person. They all said, and God has come. And they started worshipping them. They actually went into worship, worshipping Paul and Barnabas, because now they are gods. I can tell you, Barnabas pleaded with them, kneeling down, and told them, don't worship us. We are men like you. We are just men like you. But then some, 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 some Jews and certain people from, from, uh, from Antioch, mobilized people, and they stoned Paul. They stoned him to death. Actually, they, they left him because they thought he has died. The disciples went and surrounded Paul, the guys who were with him. 
they surrounded him. And for some reason, which God knows, he rose up. Maybe some wind passed by, or maybe he was given some water was poured upon him, and he resurrected. When he resurrected, he said, let's go to the next city and preach the gospel. <laughs> Joshua, can you do that? <laughs> let's move to the next city. I don't even know how the wounds were healed. I don't know what happened with this man. The blood that he had, because he was taunted to death. He said, let's move to the next city. They went to the next city. They preached the gospel. After some days, they came back to where he was stoned. Again. Don't answer me, Mwamba, but do you have that courage? <laughs> do you have that courage? Where somebody, where somebody was killing you, you go back there again and begin preaching. That's what Paul did. That man was courageous. And it challenges my heart every time I read that story. Serious challenge, because this is a man who was ready to die for the gospel. Ready for anything, and that requires courage. Therefore, brethren, as we encourage you today, and I, as, I, as I wind up, I just want to, to let you know, there is no better revival than what I'm sharing today. You know, many people think revival is, 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 is slaying people and telling them, come, and, come, and get, come again, you fall down. And all of you go and saying there was power. There was so much power in the house of God. That is also sweet. Even me, I like it. But let me tell you, there is no better revival than the word of God that comes to your heart. And when you apply that word, it moves you to the next level or moves you to a new level. And I'm telling you, courage is the one that is holding you from where you are. You only need to wake up, shake yourself, and move. One time when courage came to my heart, I told Bishop, I want to go and begin a church. <laughs> he looked at me and said, really? By the way, I can tell you, I don't think anybody expected me to be a pastor. I can tell you for, for sure and for free. I never looked like I can be a pastor, Joshua, completely. I was a man who is loving with them, everybody in the church, going to talking to people in all the groups, making jokes, talking about politics, talking about many things and bringing many people and groups together. I started so many ministries in Central Church, and they are doing very well today. But nobody thought I will wake up and say, now I want to be a pastor. <laughs> Everybody was shocked. But Bishop was good. He told me, if you want to, to get a higher position, it's good for you. The Bible says, if you desire to become a bishop, it's a good thing. And he encouraged me. And he said, we are going to plan. I said, I want to, I don't want to move out like the others who moved out and began other churches. I want to begin one under you. I think he was very excited. Under me, yes, I'm not moving out. I'm going to do a branch for this church. Ah. By the way, all that requires courage because I was around 52, 53 years. Who wants to begin church when you're about uh, to retire? <laughs> Who? <laughs> but somehow I felt I can. I felt. I don't know how I felt, but I felt. And there was courage. And it is what has resulted to where we are today. But yes, was a few sons. So some of you are seated on gifts. You only require courage to wake up and do something new. You are seated on a gift, but you don't have courage. You're asking yourself, if I, if I say I will do this, what is going to happen? Seated on gifts. But gifts are not just beginning a church. It is doing other things also. It is beginning a new business. God opening an opportunity, you challenge yourself and say, I need to do something else. You gather courage and begin doing the right things in the right time. You don't rush. Me, after I declared that in 2008, I became a pastor in 2012. 
How many years are those? Yes. Going slowly and the way listening to God and listening to your, to your advisor, listening to your authority and going slowly by slowly until it is actualized. But not waking up and saying, now I am a prophet. <laughs> eh, you are not just a prophet. You are now a senior prophet. And you begin to do things. You, you need time. You need to, but you need to summon some courage to push you from where you are and begin to do other things. Do other things. Some of you are seated on consultancies. You could be serious consultants, but you are scared of landing into consultancy. You are asking, what am I going to eat if I do consultancies? Consultancies come, they stay. Some don't come, you bid for them. Some come, others don't come. But you just need to stimulate yourself. You need to summon some current and say, I'm going to be a consultant. And you begin consultancies here and there, here and there, here and there. And from there you begin to be known. You connect yourself with the people. You begin to do these things. And you begin to become a serious consultant. And you will not be looking for a job for employment. You will be a consultant, being consulted everywhere. Marketing consultant, a researcher. You know all these consultants are there. We can do them. And then, of course, 10% come to the house of God. You know me, I want to be ministering to people that are progressive. Not people that are seated and timid and they are not courageous to move. Praise the Lord. I'm not abusing you. I'm not saying that it's good to be progressive. If you sit down and discover you are not progressive, ask yourself questions. Why am I stranded? Why am I stranded? Do you know when a child is stranded? It's not growing. Why am I there? And nothing is happening. Some of you are medics. Why can't you open a clinic? Some on your energy. Some on your, your current. Go and get a certificate. And if you are a pharmacist, open a pharmacy. What's the problem? If it sinks, it sinks. You try another one, it sinks. Try another one until it works. My sister, I should be coming to you to do CT scans in your, in your consultants. Hallelujah, Elizabeth. CT scans. I don't know, MRI. All these things. And you'll be, giving, you'll be living a higher life than you are living today. But yes, was if you, are you getting me? There are so many, there is a lot of land that has remained in our lives. And it requires a little courage. A little courage. Talk to some business people here. Let them tell you how they do business. And then get, get encouraged. And move and begin to do something. Even buy a lorry to carry sand. There is a lot of construction around here. You're just carrying sand. But you need God because you'll be stopped by police so many times. But you, you, need, you need to know how the, the job is done by, but not bribing, how it, it, you can do it better. But if you find it's taking you to hell, get out of it. <laughs> don't do something that will lead you into sin. Don't, don't do businesses which are full of corruption. Look for a business that can propel you well, can give you resources, can change your life, and you, you remain a believer, worshiping God and doing great things for the kingdom of God. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for that.